No charge. No patience. No hair left to pull out. Well, cool off, because in this video, I'm going to show you exactly how to diagnose the cause of an illuminated battery warning light and related charging system faults. But before we start, we love making great how-to diagnostic content for you all to enjoy. And we want to keep sharing our knowledge with you. All we ask for in return is for you to hit the subscribe button to help our channel grow and keep us cracking on with the videos. Now, the illumination of the battery warning light can be caused by a number of things on a vehicle's charging system, such as a faulty battery, alternator, ECU, or battery current sensor. The battery light indicates that the ECU has detected an overcharging or undercharging of the vehicle's battery, which can lead to a huge number of issues, from electrical problems to the vehicle not starting at all, and a big old list of fault codes. However, you may have one of these codes even when the battery light isn't on, but they all point to the same thing something isn't right in the charging system. Understanding the function of the battery light is extremely beneficial when trying to diagnose the causes of under or overcharging. The light receives voltage from the battery and alternator, which should be the same when the engine is running. When there is a difference in voltage from either, the light will become illuminated. This is why it should appear on the dash when the ignition is on, but the vehicle hasn't been started, as no voltage is coming from the alternator. If it doesn't appear with the ignition on, then this is a telltale sign of a blown fuse. In non-ECU controlled systems, you can determine what kind of fault you have depending on how this light appears, with a dimly lit or intermittent light indicating an internal fault with the alternator, and a bright light indicating a no charge situation. However, most modern vehicles have an ECU controlled smart charging system, where the basic components are the battery, battery current sensor, alternator, voltage regulator, and ECU. The alternator is attached to an overrunning alternator pulley, which the drive belt sits on. When the engine is running, the drive belt turns the alternator rotor and generates an AC voltage using electromagnetic induction. The alternator rectifies this voltage to DC via its diodes, which is what the vehicle's battery runs on. The voltage regulator inside the alternator adjusts the rate in which this conversion takes place, and it is controlled by the ECU using pulse width modulation. The ECU uses data from various other sensors on the vehicle, including the electronic battery sensor, to determine the alternator's output voltage, to adequately charge the battery under different loads and conditions. Now you know how the charging system functions, let's start the diagnosis. And there's a few easy checks to carry out before you need to crack out the multimeter. Let's start with the most obvious, the battery. First, check the battery for any bulges or leaks, which would indicate an overcharging situation. Check the terminals are tight and free of corrosion. And then test the battery for state of charge and state of health using a dedicated battery tester. In smart charging systems, the battery charge rate varies, so if you are using a multimeter with the vehicle running, be aware the voltage reading can vary between 13 and 16 volts. But this doesn't mean the charging system is faulty. If the battery checks out OK, then check the drive belt for any damage or slack in tension. If it looks good, then start the car and turn on as many accessories as you can, such as the radio, heater, AC and headlights. If you hear any unusual crunching, hissing or grinding noises, then disconnect the alternator connector and see if they disappear. If they do, then the fault could be with the alternator, which will need to be replaced. If you notice the drive belt was slipping, vibrating harshly or not moving at all, then check the alternator pulley. If it is fitted with an OAP, it should only turn in one direction. So if it is seized or free wheels in both directions, it will need to be replaced. Now that's a rundown of some of the basic checks you can do to identify the cause of a battery light. But if they all checked out okay and you still have one or more of these fault codes, then the fault lies with either the alternator, wiring or ECU. Now it's time to crack out the multimeter and make sure the alternator is receiving the correct voltage. With the engine off, unplug the alternator connector and use a wiring diagram to identify the high reference supply terminal. Alternator connectors can have anywhere between one to four pins depending on the system. So ensuring you know the functions of each terminal is key to avoid misleading results. In this example, we will be looking at smart charging systems with either three or four pin connectors, where the alternator's voltage regulator is supplied by a fused permanent power supply from the battery. Turn the ignition back on and probe at the high reference terminal and battery negative. The reading should be standard battery voltage of 12.6 volts. 
If you have low or no voltage here, then check the voltage regulator fuse in the fuse box. If you have no voltage at the fuse, then simply replace the fuse, retest at the connector, and then reconnect everything and rescan for codes. However, if you have battery voltage at the fuse, then the fault will lie with the wiring to the alternator or the connector. Check out our video on how to repair wiring and connector faults by clicking here. And don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any other related content. If you replaced the fuse and the codes remained, or your original test showed battery voltage, then you will need to perform a voltage drop test from the alternator output or B post to battery positive. To do this, reconnect the connector to the alternator and turn the vehicle on and turn on as many accessories as possible. You shouldn't see a reading of over 0.2 volts, but if you do, then there is high resistance in the wiring from the alternator to the battery, which will need to be repaired. If your voltage drop test showed less than 0.2 volts, then conduct the same test, but from the alternator ground to the battery negative. If the reading is over 0.2 volts, then you have a bad ground connection, which will need to be traced and rectified. If both voltage drop tests checked out OK, then it's time to perform an AC leakage test. This can be done with a scope or an RMS multimeter. To complete the test with an RMS meter, probe at the alternator output and battery positive and switch the meter to AC volts. With the ignition and car accessories on, the reading should be no more than 0.5 volts AC. If it is over that, then you've got a faulty alternator. If all of these tests come back OK, then the final thing to check would be the circuit from the ECU to the alternator. This is only relevant to smart charging systems with alternators that have three or four pin connectors containing either a signal wire or a command and feedback wire to the ECU. These can only be tested using an oscilloscope. So back probe each wire at the alternator and ground each connector, then observe the duty cycle signal. As we said before, this is a pulse width modulation waveform so the signal should be free of noise and have clear peaks and troughs. The waveform will change when the battery is under different loads, but as long as there is a clean square waveform, then you know the wiring is good. If any of these show irregularities in the waveform, then unplug the alternator connector and corresponding ECU connectors and check for any corrosion or poor terminal tension. Then test the continuity of the suspect wire or wires to ensure there isn't a fault, which is causing a poor signal to and from the ECU. If these check out OK, then the fault will lie with either the ECU or the voltage regulator in the alternator. In a 4-pin connector, if the terminals and connectors of the feedback wire are good, as well as the wire integrity, but you aren't seeing a signal on the scope, then it is likely your alternator's internal voltage regulator is faulty and will need to be repaired or replaced. If the command wire signal is non-existent or inconsistent, but the wire integrity and connectors are good, then the ECU is internally faulty and will need to be replaced. However, if you want to save yourself some time, money and stress, send your unit in to us where we can extensively test and expertly rebuild your unit to ensure you don't have any more unwanted faults with your vehicle's charging system. And there you go. That's all the diagnostic processes needed to accurately identify a fault in a vehicle's charging system. If you like the video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to help us keep making more diagnostic how-to videos like this one. Until next time, I've been Tim and thanks for watching.